Wood today, who is honoring with his, his presence tonight. Uh, he is doing a presentation on found art. The title of the presentation is Seeing Through the Eyes of the Artist. And Bruce has, as you can see behind him, wonderful art that is made of all kinds of different components. And it's interesting to look at the pieces of art and he will explain what the components are and how he put them all together. Uh, Bruce has a wide uh, background in art. He has a liberal arts degree and he also has a master's degree in education and many years of teaching and he has a studio over at Western Avenue. So if you wanna see Bruce in his studio, go over to Western Avenue on November 6th and go to the fourth floor and you will find Bruce. So let's start uh, with the presentation with Bruce Wood tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure being here. Um, I'm gonna share with you tonight, hopefully my story um, of how I got here. Um, it gets very convoluted, but uh, we'll just see what happens here. Um, I, I grew up in Massachusetts, um, very middle-class family. My father owns a gas station. Uh, my mother was a stay-at-home mom, and, uh, but she was always into crafts. She liked to do things um, and make things and crafts. We always won the, the Halloween contest because my mother made our costumes. Um, so she was very clever. Um, I was never encouraged to do art, but I was not discouraged from doing it. Um, so I went to school here in Massachusetts. Um, I didn't have a good experience in, with an art teacher in junior high, so I didn't take any art in, in high school. And all of a sudden I'm 18 years old and out of high school and trying to figure out where to go. Um, and at that time, the, uh, the Vietnam War was going on very strong. And uh, I happened to get a, a scholarship to go out to Arizona to go to school. So I thought, yeah, we'll go out to Arizona. You know, we get either Arizona or Vietnam. And I thought, well, we'll see how Arizona is. Um, so I went out to Arizona. And that was an amazing, life-changing event going out there because it was so different. Uh, it was like another world. Um, everything was, was different from, from New England. Um, the the uh, palm trees and giant cactus and uh, vast horizons and big mountains and, and huge clouds in the sky and, and uh, spectacular sunsets. Um, it really amplified how I saw things in the world. And I, I tried to soak it all in. And I think that's where I also realized that I see things a little bit differently than a lot of people. Uh, where others were seeing houses and cars and trees I was seeing shapes and shadows and textures and, and patterns. Um, and that had more interest to me than the cars, the houses, and the trees. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I took all that in and just loved traveling around Arizona and, and seeing the difference that is just you know, around the corner. Now in today's standards, it would have been not a big deal to go out to Arizona. But in 1968, it was a big adventure. To, to go out to Arizona. Um, so it was a, it was a two-year college that I went to. And I didn't have a major because I really wasn't decided on what I wanted to do yet. So I was just taking liberal studies and you know just having a good time. I was on the, the wrestling team. It was a wrestling scholarship that I got. So I was on the wrestling team, you know, messing around on campus and having a good time. And then the, the last semester that I was there, I saw some students doing a, a Raku pottery firing. And I was, I was amazed by it. And I said, that's what I want to do. That, now I found what I want to do. I want to I do art and I want to do ceramics and I want to do what, what those students are doing. So I graduated from that college with an associate's degree and then uh, got married and had two kids and decided I would like to go back to school. So I went to, I applied to Northern Arizona University uh, and got accepted. And I went out there, we were living in Massachusetts, so we picked up everything, moved out to Arizona again, uh, this time in Northern Arizona. And 
decided I was going to be an art major. So at registration, I walked into the, the registration office, uh, the building that they had set up for registration, and went to the art department, and the poor soul that was sitting there, I said, you know, well, I'm here, and I want to be an art major. And fortunately for me, they didn't know what they were doing. They said, okay, <laughs> you know, you can, you can be an art major. You just have to take, you know, these classes, and uh, we'll, you'll be off and running. And I said, great. So over the next few years, I took every art class that I could at the university. I had gotten rid of, or gotten my liberal studies out of the way at the junior college, so I didn't have to take any real classes. I could just do art, you know, all day. <laughs> um, and it was a lot of fun, and I learned an awful lot. I did feel like I was an, at a little disadvantage because some of the students that I was with um, had been taking art since they were very young. And I hadn't really taken any art, so I, I didn't really, I wasn't up to their speed yet, I guess. Um, but since I had immersed myself in the art program, I quickly caught up um, and became a, uh, a lab assistant in the art department and, uh, and uh, just really kind of took over everything that was there. So it was a lot of fun. And I think in Arizona, that's where I, I, I realized that I see things differently, you know, and, and seeing those things and, and, and wanting to kind of expand and, and, and work on those was really my passion. So after that, we, uh, I, I, I went on and continued into graduate school and got a master's degree in, in art education and then went into teaching. I taught at the university for a while, taught at a junior college for a while, um, and then teaching jobs kind of dried up, so we moved back to Massachusetts. And um, I taught at a high school back here, and then things really dried up, and I was out of work. So through a series of events, I ended up working for some, uh, some engineering companies that, um, in their art department. And it was kind of an, uh, an odd situation, because I saw things from an artist's viewpoint, where the engineers saw things from an engineering viewpoint. And, it, and usually the engineering viewpoint was very straight, strict, and regimented. And I was always messing them up by going off, <laughs> off kilter into the art world. Um, but I, th I think because of that, we came up with some pretty, pretty good things. Um, but it also taught me how to engineer, how to put things together, how to make things um, work and function together. We had a, a saying called form, fit, and function. And it was when things needed to work, this is what you had to do. And these are the criteria you had to work with. So with that, um, I, I gained all that knowledge, um, but didn't do an awful lot of art because I was trying to make a living for my family. Um, eventually, I, I got an art studio over at Western Avenue. and. Uh, and was excited that, you know, I'm finally getting back into art um, as much as I can. And when I moved in, I was doing um, lamp work class and jewelry. Uh, my degree at Northern Arizona University was uh, in ceramics, but uh, that always took a lot of square footage, so when I moved from Arizona to here, I had to leave a lot of the equipment behind. So I had picked up doing a lamp work class and, and the jewelry and, and moved into the studio. And just, it was like being back in college again. It was just so much fun being around other artists and, and trading ideas and trading inspiration and uh, trading enthusiasm uh, for the art. And because of that, my art grew and I started doing other things. I found, I found steampunk and thought, well, this is really nice. I, I, I like this steampunk genre. And, uh, and, and then there was a, another artist on the floor that was, that was using old things and putting them together into new things. And I thought, I like that too. Mm -hmm. So I kind of combined the two and started doing uh, found object sculpture. Now, for those of you that, are, that don't know what found object sculpture is, it's, it's taking old, discarded, and uh, rejected items and taking them and repurposing them into new items. And this is probably a, 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 a good, simple example of found object sculpture. 
the body for this was a vacuum cleaner. Um, and the fins on it were the fins off a toy airplane. The rest of it was just some scrap plastic that I took a heat gun to and just bent it around and then painted it to look like a trout. <laughs> so it's a trout, but it's all made from recycled items. Um, in that vision of seeing things that are are there but not there um, helped me in, in, in doing this, on putting those things together. When I look for things, um, I'm looking for the, I, you gotta kind of, I have to kind of forget what I know. So when I'm, I'm picking up things, I don't see like a squirt gun or a, a ball or a doorknob. I see shapes. I see that that's a round and that's a long and that's a bendy, and that's, you know, different things like that that I can take and now use those into my sculptures. Because um, people will ask, well, how do you see to put that in there? Well, you've got to forget about what, what it is and what you can use it for. So do you do any preliminary sketches as you're looking at objects to put this together, or do you just start constructing? Usually I start constructing. Um, one of the questions that, that I get often is, do, do the parts that you have inspire you to make something, or do you have an idea and then find the parts to make that? Yeah. And it's a little bit of both, but I would say mostly it's the parts that tell me what I'm going to do. Uh, I was cleaning the studio one day, and I picked up the handle of a vacuum cleaner in one hand, and a dust buster in the other hand. And I was just gonna move it over there. So I picked it up and I went, oh, a shark. <laughs> and those two things came together and made a steampunk shark. And it was that simple. That was the basis. That was the base of what I was gonna make. And, the, and those two pieces told me that. So I said, okay. And then I could rummage through my stuff and find the, the embellishments to put on that to complete the project. Um, there have been times where um, I, I wanted to make something specific for an event. Um, and so I, I, then I, I found those items to make that. For example, this, this item over here is a wall hanging that, um, that I did for the Merrimack Repertory Theater uh, for one of their, it hung in the lobby for one of their plays. Mm -hmm. um, which was uh, about a woman who was a secret superhero. And this one I called the villain. So this was her arch enemy, the villain. Um, so this one was made specifically for that, that event. So what I did is I, I said, well, I need something if I'm gonna have a villain. And I had this, this piece here, which is actually a Darth Vader mask. <laughs> okay. But I knew that if I put the Darth Vader mask the right way up, and all it's going to do is scream Darth Vader. Yeah. And that's all people are going to see is Darth Vader, Darth Vader. So what I did is I turned it upside down and then added all this embellishments on it and kind of put a little thing out down here like it's you know, coming out of a mouth. And it still has those eyes that are very prominent. But until you look close at it, you don't realize it's Darth Vader. But that whole aspect of you know, the, the steampunk and the, the kind of mysterious elements that go on it is what I was, I was trying to accomplish in this piece. So realistically, how many different components are on that piece? Wow. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Well, well, you got the Darth Vader mask, uh -huh. and then you got some... some is this a copper tubing? Or? It's, it's Romex wire shielding. Okay. Um, I have, you know, some, some handles, there's combs, there's... Uh, I don't know, a piece of a uh, alien up here. Um, what is the base that it's built on? Oh, the base was a, I think it was a mirror. Oh. It was a, it was a frame and there was a mirror in it that had broken and somebody was throwing it away. So I took that uh, and then, you know, put a piece of wood in the back to mount everything to. I have a kind of a, a technique that I use with, uh, with the coloring and the paint. I use a paint, or actually I use two paints. 
I thought he was more than two, but I have two <laughs> paints. Oh, yeah, come on, tell us the secrets here. <laughs> and I use spray paint that has two different solvents in it. So I'll, I'll, I'll spray one down first, and then while that's still wet, I'll spray the second one over it. And because the solvents don't mix, they, they break apart. Okay. And that breaking makes a nice mottled look on that surface. I'm not sure whether you can, you can actually see it on this yeah, one or not. Yeah, you can see that, yes. Um, and it's almost controllable. I say almost controllable because it <laughs> has a mind of its own. But that, that rand randomness about it um, is also very pleasing to me. That, you know, it, it's almost like it's, it's old and it's supposed to be that way, and that's what the piece is telling me it needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, so that was made specifically for that, while other times, like this, I saw the, the body of this, um, this fish, and it was, it was a natural body. I mean, what am I going to do? Say no? <laughs> um, another short story, I was, out, I was in, uh, people ask me sometimes, where do, you, where do you get your stuff? You know, where do you find all your components? Well, I find them everywhere, as long as I'm looking for them. Mm -hmm. um, you just keep an open mind, and they, they show up. Now, I do visit flea markets um, and thrift stores, um, and now people are, are giving me things that they want to throw out, and they just give them to me. Um, well, at least you had to come to my basement. <laughs> <laughs> I, the number of times I have heard that is, is incredible. I got a barn full of stuff. You know? <laughs> and although it looks very random on what I pick, I'm very specific about what I want. You know, and I kind of go through a checklist in my head as I'm looking for stuff because I mean, I, I, I want to know what's it made out of. Is it, is it wood? Is it plastic? Is it metal? Um, will, it, will it connect with something else? Can I actually use it? I mean, I've come across great pieces, but I can't use them because I can't, I can't do anything with it but this. Um, and there are some plastics. I use mostly plastic. And there are some plastics that don't hold um, paint very well. Oh. It either, either peels off or I've had pieces that I've painted, and then when the summer comes and everything gets hot, that the paint gets sticky again. Oh. So I, and those things, I, I have to run through my mind very quickly as to, you know, I pick it up and say, okay, uh, no. And then, uh, yeah, I, I got that <laughs> one, you know. So I find, the, I find the things everywhere, and I look for those different textures and shapes and things. In fact, I have a, a bin of some stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so let's look at some stuff. Well, I'm I just pull it out of here. So when I find things, sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do with okay. them. So these are lampshades, yes. um, but they're, they're such a nice shape. And what are you going to do with them? I mean, by themselves, they're just kind of a half. But what I've done is I've, I've mounted some wood on the inside of one. And I take the other one, and I can put those together and screw them together. And now that makes, what does that make? That makes the body of, your fish, yes. of a fish. So this is a green parada uh, made from two items very similar to this. Oh, OK. And I'll get, I'll get back to that in a second. This is a fan base that I took all the guts out of, and I love this. <laughs> this this nice pattern, this repetition that's on here. The bottom part is the bottom part of a Nerf gun. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a, a wooden handle on one side, and this is a, a piece of a lamp on the front end of it. And that will be a, some type of gun. Um, <laughs> some type of bazooka or something when I get finished with it. But you can see all the different parts of it. Okay. And what I like to do is after I'm done with the parts, or building it, I like to hide all the parts. So I will paint it one continuous color. And so all the parts kind of blend together and you really have to work to pull them apart. Mm -hmm. And 
again, this is where my, my experience in engineering comes back to me because I can take things and say, okay, how are we gonna fit this onto that, onto this, onto that, uh, and make it all work? And I'm not sure how, but it always works out. Oh, okay. And it, the, it, again, the pieces most of the time tell me what comes next. So there's that. <laughs> Look at that. What a great piece. I have no idea what I'm gonna use it for, but that's the type of things that I will look for. Something that I don't know what to do with, but it intrigues me. So, uh, there's two, two mantras that I, I try to go by. The first one is find another right answer. A lot of times in life we're, we're trying to solve uh, problems and looking for solutions of things. And so we work and we look and we look and we look and we find a solution. But what happens is as soon as you find a solution, you stop looking anymore. So I, I purposely force myself to look. And the first, the first solution may be a right answer. It may be the answer. But I push myself to go a little bit further and say, okay, what, what is another right answer? Is there something else that's just as good, or maybe better. And if not, then I use the original, but if I keep looking, sometimes I'll find a better right answer. So that, that kind of mantra of, of working that way helps me create things that go beyond the obvious. That's my other mantra, go beyond the obvious. Um, a lot of people will say, well, look at here, here's a piece, you could make some eyeballs out of this. If somebody says I can make some eyeballs out of it, the last thing I want to do is make eyeballs out of it. <laughs> because that's the obvious. That's too, too cliche. Too yeah, exactly, too cl cliche. Yeah. Somebody says, you could take these, these posts and make legs out of them. Not gonna do it. <laughs> if, it's, if it looks like legs, it, it has to be antennas or something. It has to be something totally different. So I don't know what I'll do with that, but We'll see. This was a, another Nerf gun. This is gonna be a, um, an airship. Mm -hmm. I have some airplane wings on it. It has propellers. Um, there's some hoses coming out of it. I'm gonna, I had something in here. I took, I, that's one thing I, I, I do sometimes is I'll be working on something. I'm not sure how I'm gonna finish it. So I'll put it aside and I say, okay, I'll get back to that. And I start working on something else and say, oh yeah, that will look great over here. So I go over here and I steal this from here <laughs> and I use it on this one. <laughs> and then I work on this one and say, all right, that's great. And I go back to this one and I go, hey, what Are happened? Have you ever really done with one project? <laughs> yes, and, that, and as an artist, you know, you know, sometimes yeah. it's, when do you know that you're finished? Um, and that's, that's difficult, but if I'm stealing things out of my own projects, um, sometimes they don't get finished. I've had this for several years now, trying to get back to it because I stole the back piece for something else. So, but I'm amazed at the, the toys that they make these days. This is another, this is a, a squirt gun. But look at the shapes of that, you know? And what I'll do is I can sometimes, I'll just take little pieces, like I may want to take this piece off the back and use it for something. Mm -hmm. Or just the handle, or the, the top of it, or I may put some wings on this and make this into a spaceship. I mean, there's no rules that say you have to use the whole thing or just pieces of things. You know, you just use whatever, it, whether the piece is telling you to use. Yeah, do you get a lot of people who are into steampunk coming into your shop or on your website? I do, I do. I'm, I, there's, a <laughs> there's a big steampunk movement in Russia and I have a lot of Russian people following Ooh, me okay. and they make some beautiful costumes. Um, and people that know steampunk, they find me. Um, people that don't know steampunk, I educate them. Okay. Um, and it's hard because 
you know, steampunk is such a wide genre. Mostly it's, it's uh, you know, uh, pre -Columb or Columbia, uh, Victorian that's made its way to the 21st century uh, with all the elaborates and, and things that were run by steam and now it's in the 21st century, you know, run by steam. Um, very industrial. So I don't know whether a, a, a fish fits into an industrial, you know, genre, but I really don't care, you know, because I enjoy the fish. But your lights, uh, the pieces that I've seen when you do the lights in the domes versus yes. the lights, that's definitely it. Yeah, I have, I have, uh, I have a line of, of uh, steampunk lamps that I make that are enclosed in glass domes, and that's purposely made in the, in the steampunk genre, and those are a lot of fun to do. And those just came by accident. I had a, one of the glass domes, and it was a lamp, and it was, you know, all ready. And I had a whole bunch of vacuum tubes and other pieces. And I said, well, maybe I'll just put them together and make a lamp. I put them together and, and made a lamp, and I put it on Instagram and said, hey, look what I did. <laughs> and somebody said, I want to buy it. <laughs> and I said, that's the best thing for well, an artist. I said, great, let's do some more. <laughs> so I have uh, many lamps in my studio that are, that are steampunk. Um, this, I found this piece right here. It looks like the head of a turkey. <laughs> I thought it looked like the head of a mosquito. Oh, yeah, okay. With a but a turkey, down. yeah. So what I did is I took that. That was the beginning of this piece. Man, it's not done yet. But that was the beginning, and that this is a, uh, a little car from, it looked like a little spaceship car that I mounted to the head of the mosquito. This is the, the container inside a, uh, a squirt gun. Oh. And I glued all these. Uh, yeah, they look like rivets. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I glued them all on to look like rivets, and I actually scored it to look like it had seams in it. The challenge is I'm ready to go with this. I can make some wings. But I need to find how to make some mosquito legs, mm. which are difficult because they're so thin um, and they're very big. Mm. So I've been, I've been holding on to this thinking, okay, sometime mosquito legs are going to pop into my vision and I'm going to grab those and I'll finish this piece. I've already got the wings, but the legs are difficult. Legs are hard to make. It, for me, in my opinion, because I want them to look really cool. Plus, uh, they have to carry the weight of the piece. Exactly. So yeah. that's why you see where I make fish, because they don't have legs. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Here, we'll look at the camera. <laughs> so here's another piece that I've been, I've been waiting for inspiration to come to find the legs. And then I'll put the wings on it. And hey, what else we got here? Here is another squirt gun. I put some airplane wings on it here and some airplane wings on it here. Um, I need to, oh, look at that, there's a computer mouse there. Oh, yes. I need to uh, add some more things to this and then I will paint it all one color um, like it, to make it look like metal. There is a particular type of paint that you use on this? Um, no, just the, just Home Depot spray paint, uh, mostly. What I will do, like this is a, a, uh, a green paint painted over a, a black subsurface. Mm -hmm. um, but what I will do is I will take black paint, when I'm done painting that, I'll take black paint and white black paint over the whole thing and then wipe it off. So you've got the texture look. Exactly, and, and the and color. the black paint sticks in all the little cracks and crevices, and really enhances those, and, and you know, makes them pop. Now, and what are the teeth on that fish? The teeth are a couple combs, hair combs, that I painted white, and I put some little whiskers on him. That was just. Okay. Um, so you use the heat gun to bend the foam. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I must have. I had a 
torch at the time, and I think I just heated it up a little bit. Then I, I screwed them in place so they stay that way. And then there's, there's pieces of plastic that are cut out. Um, these are, are welding goggles oh, okay. mm -hmm. that are on there. This is a spatula. <laughs> this is cute. Um, this was the, the top of a ceiling lamp that was right up oh, next. Video? Next, yeah. And I just beat the snot out of it and flattened it out and made it a tail. And it was fun doing these whiskers because they were, these are metal. So I just heat up the metal and then poke it in. Wow. And then okay. cut it and t heat it up, poke it in, cut it. You know. So they're all, they're all kind of melted right in place. Here we have Thor's, yes. Thor's helmet. Yes. Yep. <laughs> what I like about this is that it has these nice wings on it. And I've actually taken the wings off another helmet and used it on a piece, which I have right over here. So here, you can see on the side, those are the wings oh, off, yes, of, definitely. off of Thor's helmet. This is one of those, those uh, items that it was left at my door, <laughs> and it was a vacuum cleaner. If you look at this, I'll look at this camera up here. This was a vacuum cleaner, and I saw this long handle on it, and this little belly shape here, and I said, that's a sea creature. So I put a spatula on for the tail. And then I said, well, what am I going to use for the head? I could use just the ball yeah. or something, but, you know, we got to go beyond the obvious. Yes. So I said, let's see how a Nerf gun would look there. Mm -hmm. And the Nerf gun had the same kind of shape that came off the taper of the vacuum cleaner. So I took a Nerf gun and I, I cut it in half and then added it to the front of that. This came off an, another toy, I added that on. These eyes came off, for some reason, the house, the shower curtain fell down and the hook from the shower curtain broke. Those are the the on the so these curtain. are the doodads on the shower curtains. Oh wow! So that's what I tell my wife. Get your house together. <laughs> 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 so those are the, you know, they made nice. Because I thought uh, at first they were marbles, maybe. No, nope, those shower curtains. Oh, yeah. okay. They could have been marbles, but you know, the shower curtain was right there in front of me. So I. Yeah. But then there's some pieces on here that were just that I took off other little things just to add like this little piece here was off a uh, mechanical Godzilla and I like the, the uh, I don't know if you can see that I like the little spikes yeah. that came up and that kind of added something onto it and I said so okay so I made that sanded that all down cut that on and then these things were the, the wings uh, off of some little action figure. Now do you put this together with an epoxy glue or are they how are they how is what are how are you holding all this together? Um, it's it's uh, screw and glue. Um, I use screws um, that you can see over here. Mm -hmm. They're they're self drilling screws, so they have a little drill bit on the end of them, and when you okay, yeah they open up when you well they they actually just they don't open up they just go through and make a hole and then the threads on the screw hold it in place. Okay. So they, you can just put those in. You don't need to pre drill a hole or anything. You just you zip them in, and I use these finish washers uh, on top of it to to uh, to accent that they're screws. Otherwise, they're just screws on there. It gives it another Finishing. another level of depth on there to put those finish washers on. And then I use um, uh, E6000 for uh, for my glue because that's a very strong industrial glue. Now, what is this again? It's called E. 6,000. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, the only disadvantage is that it usually takes, you know, 24 hours to dry. So you, you, I have to kind of 
work and know that some things will be left overnight. And what, am I, what is the last thing I'm going to glue together so I can come back the next day and, okay. and work on it some more? Um, so the eyes are probably glued on. Um, the rest is, uh, these are glued on, and then all the screws that are on there. Um, this, is, uh, this is one of my favorite pieces. I really like the way that it turned out. And again, I painted it with the two types of different solvent paint. Went over it with black paint and wiped it off so it fits in all the crevices. But then I can go back in, like you can see, um, these faux Romex shielding, that was part of the Nerf gun to begin with. But I just went in and, and painted them copper to make, try to make them pop off of that. I have people come into my studio and I explain to them, I say, yeah, this is a, um, a vacuum cleaner. And you know, there's a spatula for the pail, a Nerf gun for the head. And they go, wow, now I see it. And I say, you know, if I can hide something right in front of you, right. then I know I'm doing a good job. I want, I want it to be, I want the piece to be, to speak as one piece, not individual pieces. That's why when, when you're building something, sometimes I'll have to paint it completely black to fool my eye so that I can look at the shape because you're drawn to the different colors. I've, I've kind of developed an eye. Ah. See, now that's, a, that's, that's what I call a bendy. Uh -huh. yeah, that you can, you can do all kinds of things with that. I don't know what you would use it for, but I've used it, I've used several of these on other things. You can even, you know, put it together or stand up by itself. Um, again, it, it's, it's the item that I like how it looks, so I'll find a way to use it. I don't know how, but that doesn't <laughs> matter because that's, that comes in the future. You, uh, when you're working, do you work on a large table with a lot of things out in front of you so that you can sort of mix and match and find as you're, well, you think you're going in this direction, so let me find a shape that matches what I'm going for? Or I not? do. I do. I work on a large table and usually it's a big mess and I have the basis and then I'll paw through things and I have, I have small bins of, of items that I call my embellishments. So I'll just kind of dig through those and, and say, oh, look at, you know, I, I have the eyes, I have the, you know, the, the, the wings for that, I have this or that or the other thing. Um, and play with it, you know, I hold it up to that and look at it and say, no, that doesn't work. Uh, try something else. And you say, oh, that doesn't work. Try something else. And then, oh, hey, that's not bad. Let's try that and, and, then, and then work from there. So by the time I get done with the project, I've got a table full of stuff right. that now I have to put back and use on something else. Uh, when I first started doing this, I was panicking because I couldn't find enough stuff. <laughs> you know, I didn't, ha I didn't have enough junk, so I was, I was going out really, I was looking for anything, you know. And you gotta develop a sharp eye because sometimes I'm be driving down the road and you only got a few seconds right. to see what's in somebody's trash barrel. You know, it's like- Garbage mm, day, yeah. Yeah, garbage day is like, oh, wait a minute, I see something over there. You know, and you got to stop the truck, jump out, throw it in the back, and then, then you're off. <laughs> um, I, I stopped one day. There was a there was a trash bin, and there was a, uh, a plastic bin, and on top of it was a Mr. Potato Head. And I said, "Oh, look at that!" So I stopped and I looked. The bin, it, it was almost this big, and it was full of Mr. Potato Heads. Oh my, what in the name of God were they doing with them all? They were throwing them out, and so I got all these Mr. Potato Heads, <laughs> and. <laughs> I've still got probably 80% of them. Okay? But, you know, you can't throw Mr. Potato Head away. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mrs. Potato Head would miss him. So I call this one my bearded sea dragon because he's got a little beard also. Mm -hmm. We were talking about uh, embellishments. This guy is another one of my favorite pieces because of the embellishments that he has. I found this, this uh, action figure at Savers and his head was damaged. Not a problem. 
so I got to replace his head. And again, you go beyond the obvious. You know, you could I could just put a you know a tennis ball on there and, and make a head, but that that wouldn't be very appealing. So I looked through my my bins of embellishments and came up with this dinosaur tail and figured, well, that would make an interesting head. And on the back side of it, he's got a breathing hole. Oh, wow, nice. So that, that was perfect. I could, I could make a head out of that. You don't need eyes. Sometimes I like leaving eyes off a of thing because that lets the viewer determine where the eyes are or what they're looking at or if they're looking at anything. And then I added these wings that came off a, another little toy and this, this backpack that's kind of a oxygen concentrator generator. And when I make things like that, I have no idea what I'm doing or how it would work. But I figure I can make it look like it was supposed to work. <laughs> so I, I add things on there like, like the top of it is like a heat sink. So when it gets hot, you know, the heat just dissipates. That makes sense. And then the back has, you know, a little round antenna taking, you know, all the, the, uh, the waves that come across. So the, you know, the there's a, a gear on the back. There's a few gears on the back because obviously things have to move. And in, yeah. steep, in steampunk, uh, gears are, uh, are big. You know, that, that type of thing using, using gears. But what I also did was I made a little rubber band to go around the gear and around part of the backpack to look like, you know, that gear oh. turned something to actually make it work. So if you took it, if you looked at it close, it was like, wow, that must really do something. And that's the goal, is to make it look like everything is supposed to fit together. And that's what I love about doing this, is, is taking things that don't go together and putting them together as if they look naturally that way. And if I can accomplish that and I'm happy with that, then, then uh, that, that satisfies my needs. We have a comment that this is very enjoyable. I love the steampunk aspect. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And, and it's just that taking items, again, that don't go together and making something out of them that I guess most of the time I'm trying to please myself. And if it pleases the, my, the audience and my customers, then um, I guess I'm successful. I see something like this in a film. You know, somebody well, depicting a, a short little video using some mm. of these caricatures that you're building here. I've had a number of people come in the studio and ask if I make props for movies. Right. Um, and I say no, but if you know of anybody, you please hook me up. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of people have commented on that, that you know things like this and some of the other um, figures that I have in my studio would make great animated features. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I guess, you know, that's kind of, it. as a kid, in the back of my head, that's kind of, I used to read, you know, buy the comic books and read the Marvel comic books and all that stuff that would go on. And, you know, so that's kind of in my history also, is, mm -hmm. is those type of, you know, supernatural beings and, and superheroes. All right, what else we got here? Oh. Just wanted to give you a time check. It's 7.45. Holy mackerel, am I doing good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very pleasant talk, <laughs> yes. Um, this piece over here, I'm gonna walk over here. This was, this is a, uh, a piece that I put together, and I, I don't remember why. I guess, oh, I know what it was. I found this piece, which was a, um, a baking pan for making heart-shaped cake, uh, cakes. Oh, okay. And I thought, well, that's really kind of cool. <coughs> you know, I could use that as a background. Then I found this brass um, scallop shell. And I thought, well, that would make a really cool background too. So I started with that. 
I had this this little figurine that I that I found someplace. I said, all right, I'm going to make a, a like a diorama, you know, put that together. And so when I started, I said, okay, you know, and I'm 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 very anal sometimes. I very um, want to be symmetrical about things. But then I understand that sometimes my symmetrics have to be asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a combination of the two. But what I did is this is a um, this is a plastic squirt gun, I believe it was, that, that I found at Savers, and I cut it in half, and now I have a nice symmetrical frame to put this in with the two sides. These are some brass horns, obviously, um, parts off a, of a bicycle gear. I have no idea what this is. I found it, and I said, I like the repetition of that that's there. And then some watch gears. Um, and then you have to have a little cherub just to watch over everything. Oh, cute! <laughs> so I don't know if you can you can see that in the in the uh, in the close ups or not, but it's it's got a lot going on in that, and it's just kind of a a nice, you know. And I call it the birth of spring. How nice is that? Yes. You know, and as we as we move into winter. You know. Just be happy all this rain was not snow. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to move this, this guy back. This, how am I going to do this? I got too much. See, this is what my studio looks like. <laughs> you know? I got stuff everywhere, all over the floor, and I have to keep moving it around so that I can work. Look at this. Get a close up of that. That's a bee. I found that, and I said, man, I like that. Look at those eyes. Oh, yes. You know, and, and the wings that are on that. I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do with that, but that's something I want. <laughs> so Now, the bee, the eyes and all were that way? This is, this is exactly how the toy that's was. originally how you bought it? You yeah. Found it? it had something else coming out of the, the sides here that were, were broken off. So they were, I mean, this was at Savers, and they were selling it for like a buck. I said, how can you pass that up? So frequent savers. Uh, yes, visit. I got you know, frequent flyer miles at savers. <laughs> this this piece here was a a gift from an artist friend who found it on the side of the road, just like I find my stuff. Oh, and it's it's a um, an old Victrola horn. And when I saw this, I almost immediately thought, wow, that would make a very cool lamp. And almost, it almost cries steampunk. Mm -hmm. So I, I took some uh, upholstery tacks and put the upholstery tacks on the outside of this to give it that steampunk look. This is, the bottom is actually from an old lamp. Um, and then I, I wired the inside so that it has three bulbs on the inside. Oh, okay, Edison type bulbs. And and uh, you really can't see them as you're standing, you know, face to it, but it lights up everything above it. Mm -hmm. The the problem that I had was that it had a big chunk taken out of it, and it kind of disturbed me. It's like, well, how am I going to, you know, work with that? What am I going to do? Am I going to fill it in? Am I going to, you know, cover it up? Am I going to cut it back? Um, so this, this actually sat in my studio for maybe five years because I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do with it. I started doing the, the, uh, the rivets in it, and I got those put in, um, and then it's like, all right, now what am I going to do with it? And I, finally one day it came to me. Rather than try to cover up that a piece was missing, I said I'll incorporate that into the design. So I made a, a bug. Let me put it on the close-up camera. I made a bug that I can put up on the edge here and make like the bug has eaten the side of the... Oh, that's clever. Now let me see if I can 
Check this guy this out. This is here. like a little kid having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the bug. Uh -huh. okay. And he has just eaten a piece of this beautiful flower. <laughs> so that's my steampunk lamp uh, with bugs. So a lot of these things I've, I've, I've made um, over the years when I get back and forth to the, to the studio. Okay, I have a comment on your lamp. Uh, this is, uh, I am so glad that I've tuned in in time to hear the talk about the old Victorian piece. This is the coolest lamp ever. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again, thank you very much because I do this to, to please myself, and if somebody else likes it, that, that's validation that I gladly accept. Um, during the pandemic, you know, everything changed. Uh, yes. Um, I wasn't able to go to the studio, and if I did go, there was nobody there, and it was just kind of, I, so I stayed home a lot. But being an artist and being you know, somebody that has to have, be doing something all the time. Um, I needed something to do. So I had, uh, I had picked up some, some cabinet cards at a flea market uh, about a year ago. And cabinet cards, where are you? Cabinet cards are the old photographs that they, they took of people around 1900. And they were, they were printed on stiff cardboard mm -hmm. and on the back was was uh, you know the advertisements of the person that took the photograph and they were very elaborate in the victorian scrolls and and all the uh, the photographs back when photography was young are are very you know straight up straight laced i mean they, they had to stand there while the flash went off and they the film developed so most of them are you can see a lot of them i, I noticed are leaning on tables because they can hold that pose for a while. So you have people with their arms on the tables or <laughs> hips on the tables or, or sitting in a chair. So I had an idea to take those. Uh, I, I love the, the, the steampunk genre and I also like Art Nouveau. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to combine the two together and create a, uh, uh, a Steam Nouveau type of style. So I took these, these old photographs and I, I, I cropped out the images in those and then started building um, collages using those, let me put that there, sorry, the audience can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I took the, the image from the, the cabinet cards, and then started building, as I build my sculptures in different layers, one on top of the other on top of the other, where I could take like the, an old ring of, um, of screws and, and put this ring on there, and then the background was gears, and then the front was, was maybe calla lilies, and then there was horns and, and all this stuff going on, and just build on top, of one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other, in Photoshop, mm -hmm. and I would have, you know, 20 or 25 different layers of things, where I could just pull them in and pull them back, and it 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 really got me through the pandemic, oh, okay. and the and you know the quarantining at home, because I was able to to keep my creative juices going, and and build things, two dimensionally, what I was always accustomed to building, three dimensionally. Let me put up another one of these. This is one of my favorites. I'll show the audience. Th I call this one the cat sitter. And this was a, a, a picture of a beautiful woman sitting in a chair, one of those cabinet cards. And this is one of those hairless Egyptian cats. Ah, okay. And I put that on there. And of course, you got to have the rat in there. Um, <laughs> But the background is, is a bunch of gears like steampunk. Um, the, the 
surface background behind it is, is some photographs that I took uh, when we visited Washington State. So I have a whole library of things, just like my three-dimensional stuff where I have bins of stuff. In my computer, I have a whole library of things. A lot of the photographs I've taken over the years. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll find something that's three-dimensional and I take a picture of it. And now I can use that in my two-dimensional artwork. So those type of things that I, that I, I did really kept, kept me going through the pandemic. And I'm, 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 I, I kind of, when I latch onto something, I latch onto it. So I, I, I grab an idea and then I exhaust that idea. And I've always worked that way. Mm. And I don't know whether that's good or bad, but I grab a hold of the idea and then it's one after another, after another, after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. I made over a hundred of these um, collages. Just, and it was like I did nothing. I mean, I was just, they were just coming out, coming out, coming out. To the point where I, I went through those and now that we're coming out of the pandemic, it worked out very nice because I've kind of exhausted all my ideas mm -hmm. for those collages. But in almost anything I've done, either you know, in ceramics or, or, clay or um, jewelry or whatever, I latch onto something and just, just push it to its limits over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and I like the way they turned out. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Put this last one up. So is there a new trend that's cooking in your mind now to go and start? Oh, that's the problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've kind of exhausted the collages. The, the 3D stuff I still enjoy doing. I, I do, as I said, I, I have a lot of lamps that, um, that I've built, but I have so many lamps now that, you know, um, I, I set up a, a workshop in my basement during the pandemic also, you know, and go down there and putter and build lamps. And I've built so many of them that, you know, I, I build them, put them in a box, yeah. seal them up, bring them to the studio, and they're sitting in the studio still in the box <laughs> uh, because I don't have any place to, to, to display, to display yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so I think that kind of wraps up, as far as I can tell, what I do, unless there's, you know, some other questions or, or people are... I have not gotten anything Tuning in. out. No, <laughs> this I have guy, not gotten anything else in. These guys and are... And you're at 8 o'clock. All right. Three things I'd like to leave you with. someone and they're going to give it to their son for Christmas and you know and I've done I've I've done three of them so far and that's fun and what I'll what I will do is I will talk to um, the person that's that's commissioning that and say okay what is this person like what do they do and you know what are their interests are there any quotes that they have or um, or any of that um, and then find me a good headshot of that person and I, if I get a good headshot, I've got a whole cadre of bodies that I can put them on. And I will put them on the body in a, in a pose. And uh, if they like reading books, I can put a, a book in their hands and stacks of books, you know. If they, you know, if, yeah. on, if they like being on the beach, you know, I can put waves in the background. I can. Yeah, I, okay. I, and it, it becomes an, uh, a vintage piece because I, I make it look like, like these, like the old. Uh, cabinet card, so it's almost like a vintage piece, and uh, and it's a lot of fun. And and again, it's 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 fun seeing people's face when I, you know, when I when I give that to them and they they can pass it on. I have a question. People want to know your website, and they also want to know if on the website you have photographs of the type of lamps that you make. Yes. <laughs> and tell us your website, please. Uh, my website is. Uh, the glass ingots, okay. G L A S S I N G O T, mm -hmm. and it's called that because when I first 
you know, started the business, I was doing glass work. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's the glass ingots. Um, and on the website, there is uh, a lot of pictures. I don't sell anything off the website. It's just all for viewing. And there's a lot of uh, pictures of, of the 3D sculpture, um, of the lamps. There's lamps on there. I need to update it, but there are pictures of the lamps. Well, I know uh, if on the Chelmsford Art Society website, uh, I have a piece about this presentation. And on the presentation piece, I have some of your work, and I put in some of the pictures of yeah, lamps. Yeah. A better place to go to view images is on my Instagram account, okay. which is Bruce Wood Artist. And um, I've just revamped that, so there's, there's not a, a ton of pictures on it, but I'm trying to post a couple every day of you know, the 3D stuff, the 2D stuff, and the lamps. Okay. So that's a, that's a good place to, to look. Okay. So we've had the last two questions have been about the lamps and the website. Okay. okay. Okay, I hope I answered that. Yep. Well, thank you very much. Well, I got three. I got three things to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I only got one. I, three, three, three. Tidbits of advice that I can give advice okay, on. Okay, so. go right ahead. If you're getting into the arts, or even if you're in the arts, um, my first bit of advice, because people ask me at times, you know, and I don't know if I know what I'm talking about or not, but I'm going to give the advice anyways. <laughs> um, one is is learn the basics. You know, learn about perspective and shading and, and texture and, and composition and negative positive spaces. Uh, I see a lot of people that they want to jump into being an artist or want to jump into the arts and they want to bypass all of that stuff mm -hmm. and jump right into I say, well, I can be an uh, abstract painter. Watch this. But their stuff never turns out like the people that know what they're doing because they don't know the basics. And once you know the basics, I, ca I call it your, uh, your artistic muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So now you know it, it's in the back there. So when I'm building stuff, or when I'm doing my collages, I don't think about, well, is that the right perspective? Is that the right shading? Is, that, is the sun coming from here? Or you know, coming from here, does everything match up? What about the size? The, you know, because that stuff I, I, I do subconsciously mm -hmm. because I know the basics. And once you learn the basics, it's easier to move on because you have that foundation to work from. Um, the second piece of advice is be curious about um, your, your journey into the art world. You know, seek out um, information, seek out uh, other artists, go to, go to museums, go to galleries, and, and see what's out there. The internet is great because you can, you can you know, not leave your house and you can, you can look up different artists, you can look up different styles, you can look up what other people are doing. And basically, you know, as an artist, we get a lot of inspiration from each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always taking from each other. Uh, there's a book that I would recommend called Steal Like an Artist. <laughs> oh, okay. And it's about artists, and I love what the, the guy proposes in there that we all steal from each other. You know, we, we, we see ideas and we go, oh, I like that idea. You know, and we can't, I don't think we can exactly copy someone else because we don't have the background of that person, but that may lead us down another avenue. Mm -hmm. So you steal like an artist. I have a request for you to repeat your Instagram name. Instagram name. Bruce Wood Artist. Okay. I, I tried to make it simple. But <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Well, one more. Oh, that's oh. right. We're only at two. We're only at two. <laughs> <laughs> We're <at> two. <laughs> the third thing is make a lot of art. Just make a lot of art. The more you make, the more you learn, the better you get. As long as you're trying to do better today than what you did yesterday, you can grow as an artist. So I say make a lot of art. You're going to have some great art. You're going to have some terrific failures. Um, <laughs> oh, don't we all do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's part of learning. That's part of making art. So just make a lot. And as you make a lot, you know, you can, you can call out what you like or don't like. But you learn from the experiences of, of doing that. So with those three tidbits and a book about stealing art, I'm done.
thank you. And I just want to tell people that the next demonstration will be on November 11th. And we will have Raksha Shah, who will be doing a acrylic painting presentation for us at that time. So stay tuned. And thank you, Bruce, for a delightful, delightful presentation on everything you've been able to build. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.